the Brandenburg class were the first battleships of a united Imperial Germany that could properly be described as ocean-going. As such, they were also the first German warships to carry radio communications equipment, which until then hadn't really been necessary. The class comprised four ships, Brandenburg, Kurfürst Friedrich Wilhelm, Wiesenberg and Wirth. The class was built in the first half of the 1890s and deviated somewhat from standard pre-dreadnought configuration. This was in part because in the past German ship designs had been based very heavily on the ideas of other nations, but starting with this class, Germany dropped this idea and began designs from scratch using their own concepts. As a result, they were something of an experimental class, with half of the ships receiving compound armour made of steel, iron and wood layers, as a result of problems in delivering Harvey nickel steel alloy, which was what they were designed for and was reused in the remaining ships. The most obvious difference was the addition of a third twin turret amidships, with the same calibre as the fore and aft turrets. However, this did not make them an early attempt at dreadnoughts, since they still retained secondary and tertiary batteries, and the new turret did not use exactly the same guns as the fore and aft ones. The ships were also somewhat slow, being capable on average of 16.5 knots as opposed to the average 18 knots on contemporary battleships. The main battery consisted of the fore and aft turrets mounting a pair of 11 inch 40 calibre guns each, with the central turret mounting a pair of 11 inch 35 calibre guns. The secondary battery consisted of eight single 105mm guns, and the tertiary battery consisted of eight 88mm guns. Three torpedo tubes would complete the basic loadout. Unfortunately, the shorter length of the middle gun turrets' guns meant that their ballistic performance was different to that of the fore and aft guns, which meant that at close range, the broadside had to be limited by gunnery officers who were looking for ranging data for guns that used four different ballistic arcs. Between this and the blast damage caused by the middle turret to the ship's superstructure, the idea was not deemed to be a great success. The ships were modernised at the start of the 20th century with the addition of a second conning tower, new engines, and a reduced superstructure. Now they would see their first action when the entire class was sent as part of the German contribution to China during the Boxer Rebellion, but due to the distance involved, they managed to arrive after the main siege was over and instead would spend most of their time putting down local uprisings. With the start of the Dreadnought era, they became rapidly obsolete, and in 1910, Kurfürst Friedrich Wilhelm and Wiesenberg, the most advanced ships of the class, were sold to the Ottoman Empire and renamed Barbaros Heyreddin and Turgut Ries, respectively. The Brandenburg and Wirth were assigned to coastal defence duties, although this would only last till 1915, when they were withdrawn from active service to become barrack ships until they were scrapped in 1919. The ships in Ottoman service experienced a dramatic downturn in capability due to the lack of trained and motivated manpower as well as poor to non-existent maintenance. In 1911, Italy declared war and by the end of the conflict, despite spending most of their time in port and not actually fighting anything, they had condenser troubles which had reduced their speed to between 8 and 10 knots. The range finders and ammunition hoists for the main battery guns had been removed, the telephones didn't work, the pipes for their pumps were badly rusted, and most of the watertight doors would not close. The next year, the Ottoman Empire would get into another war, the First Balkan War. And by then, the ships were in even worse condition. Still, they were sent to bombard the Bulgarian army, but their shooting was so poor that their main effect was simply to boost the morale of the Ottoman troops by being there and making loud noises in the direction of the enemy. With all this in mind, the admirals in charge of the Ottoman navy now decided that clearly it was the perfect time to send their ships to break the Greek naval blockade. As you might expect, this went badly. At the Battle of Eli, within five minutes of the fleet's opening fire, the Greek armoured cruiser Georgius Avarov crossed over to the other side of the Ottoman fleet and put them under fire from both sides. The Ottomans turned to retreat and fell out of formation, blocking each other's fields of fire. During the battle, Barbaros Heyreddin was hit twice, the first shell killing five men assigned to a damage control party and the second shell jamming the rear turret. As this had clearly gone so well, they decided to try again next year, and at the Battle of Lemnos, after having failed to lure Yavarov away from the Dardanelles, Barbaros Heyreddin, Turgut Rees, and the other units of the Ottoman fleet would try again. 
This time, they concentrated their fire on the Avarov, and Barbaros Heyreddin turned north to block an attempt to encircle them. But the old battleship Mesudii took a serious hit, and then a shell hit Barbaros Heyreddin on her amidship's turret, killing the entire gun crew. Smoke caused by multiple hits to the superstructure was sucked up into the boiler rooms, and the ship's speed fell to five knots. As a result, Turgut Rees took the lead of the formation, and the Ottoman Admiral decided to break off the engagement. During the battle, both ships had had their barbettes disabled by gunfire, and had both had caught fire as a result. They'd fired a total of 800 rounds, most of their main battery 11-inch ammunition, and had scored no hits. During World War I, some of the ship's guns were removed and employed as coastal guns to shore up the defences protecting the Dardanelles. In the meantime, both ships were used as floating artillery batteries at the Nara naval base. But as April 1915 rolled around, the two ships came out to bombard British landings on the first day of the Gallipoli campaign. But after 14 shells, Heyreddin's right gun barrel in the centre turret exploded, destroying the gun. After a shell exploded inside one of Turgut Rees's guns in early June, both battleships with- were withdrawn, and on 7th of August, the British landed more troops at Suvla Bay. This meant Heyreddin was sent to support the Ottoman defences again. While she was en route to the area, with only a single torpedo boat as escort, she was intercepted by the submarine HMS E-11 in the Sea of Marmara. The submarine hit Heyreddin with a single torpedo, and she capsized seven minutes later with the loss of 21 officers and 237 men. In January 1918, the battlecruiser SMS Goburn and the light cruiser SMS Breslau left the Dardanelles to attack British ships. But at 11.30, Goburn ran aground and was subjected to air attacks, which were hindering salvage efforts. Therefore, after a few days, Turgut Rees showed up and towed the battlecruiser back to port. Turgut Rees survived the war and would be used as a training ship, it starting in 1924 before being used as a hulk, and eventually scrapped in 1938. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.